Hi, I'm Tim Wolf from the Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. We're waking up with watches, and everything you see is for sale. Reach out to me, T Masso, at thewatchbox.com to buy any watch you see here. Prices, boxes, papers, extra photos, anything we can clarify, we will do. We're always looking to build inventory, so if you want to sell a watch or trade a watch, we pay cash, we pay fast, no upper limit on value paid. We will buy an entire collection, and we will wire the funds promptly. To buy, trade, or sell, reach out to me. It's the same email address, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Okay, gray ceramic. In 2014, Omega gave us the sequel to The Dark Side of the Moon. This is the Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch gray side of the moon. And frankly, like The Godfather 2, the sequel surpassed the original. This watch is blindingly gorgeous. A combination of mirror polished and satinated gray ceramic. It's scratch resistant, feather light, and full of refinement. For one thing, the dial, which you could see right underneath the hands, the dial is made of frosted solid platinum. So this is a platinum disc of metal with a sandpaper-like graining. The blackened hands, as well as our indices, are made of white gold. We have a mono counter at 3 o'clock, so you have chronograph hours and minutes on one counter to keep the dial balanced with a twin register-style display. Let's take a look at the loom, which, again, surpassed the original dark side. The full tachymeter is loomed, and so is the insert on the crown. Now, the watch is 44.25 millimeters in diameter, but don't let that fool you. It's actually quite light and easy to wear. We'll zoom out a little bit. We'll throw it on my wrist. My wrist is 16 centimeters circumference. The watch is about 50 millimeters from lug to lug, and you can see it's not approaching the edge of my wrist. It's a full-sized watch, but being as light as it is, made all of sapphire and ceramic, it sits easily. I could recommend it for a wrist as small as 15 centimeters circumference, and it is full of thoughtful tech refinements. So aesthetically refined tech refinements as well. You can move the hour hand independently, and you don't really need to worry about the chronograph it keeps running or the minutes. You can drive the date forward or backwards as you travel. It's a great function for people who have a lot of travel on their agenda, businessmen, adventurers, and of course, on the reverse side, those who love machines are going to find satisfaction because this watch is full of innovation. Now, what's very traditional here is the use of a column wheel as you can see through the skeletonized bridge, so it's a very crisp, traditional column wheel actuation of the chronograph, but we get a vertical clutch, so there is no play in the chronograph seconds hand. It starts without jumping. Now you can also activate hacking or stop seconds by pulling the crown out all the way, and the watch includes an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring, plus a full balance bridge with a free sprung balance for shock tolerance. It is a coaxial escapement as invented by George Daniels, so direct and indirect impulse with tangential contact, improving power reserve and precision this watch has it all right down to small thoughtful details like the use of a rubber gusset sewn into the strap so that the pin of the buckle won't gouge it you also have a buckle that is made entirely of plasma arced bright polished and mirrored ceramic on its side it's satinated on its top it's mirrored even the pin is made of ceramic this is where a lot of brands would just use a PVD buckle of some kind or a bare piece of steel, not Omega. It's able to render the buckle itself, including the pin, in that same scratch-resistant ceramic material. So this watch has it all going on. It's actually a watch I'm considering myself uh, to replace my late Zin EZM 1.1. Let's say you want something more sporting, though, or more swimmable. Well, with 300 meter water resistance, this is the ticket. You get the same quality of gray ceramic. It's a 43 millimeter case. This is the Blancpain 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe. The model, as you see, it came out in 2016. Now, it's very easy to wear, super comfortable, 13.5 millimeters thick, and you can see just under 50 millimeters from lug to lug. We'll do that distant shot again so you can see the rest of my arm and get a sense of the watch in proportion. It's not that big. It's smaller than the standard 5015. This is the reference 5000 Bathyscaphe. And being all sapphire and ceramic, it's really light. Now it has a bezel that is 120 click. Let's have a listen. Very positive. You can line up the luminescent index with the hybrid syringe baton minute hand. We'll do a quick loom shot here. As you can see, no shortage of loom and all three hands loomed, something every dive watch should have. The dial is a blue metallic sunburst. This is a no crown guard profile with squared off lug ends and minimal beveling. It's designed to reference the 
Blancpain 50 Fathoms watches of the 1950s through early 60s and definitely does that. Mechanically, it's identical to the 5015, which is all to its advantage. You get the gorgeous automatic winding three-day power reserve caliber 1315. Look at the size of these mirrored bevels on the rotor as well as the bridges. Look at this lovely spiral graining that's brushed across the bridges. The black polishing of the screws, which feature chamfered slots and circumference, and the mirror polishing of the wells for the jewels as well as the screws no detail is overlooked. It's adjusted in six positions, one more than a standard chronometer. It's free sprung for durability with all adjustments made via variable polar moment bolts that are fixed into the balance. It has an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring. It beats at eight beats per second. These movements are known to keep time as accurately as plus one second per day. You can see there's solarization on the ratchet wheel and satination on all the individual wheels and even little features like the pins used to locate bridges have been polished on their top. It is a very impressive watch and a very impressive movement, a technically and aesthetically accomplished. Let's say your budget's not quite as ambitious, but you want something of comparable quality. Well, then we have the Omega Seamaster Diver 300 meter. 42 millimeters in stainless steel. This is the well-regarded uh, white ceramic dial version. So black ceramic bezel insert, white ceramic dial with wave pattern. You can see the hands as well as the indices have been blackened. We'll do a quick loom shot here so you can get a good sense of how this watch glows. It glows well, and you'll note that the minute hand and the bezel pearl are green, and the rest of the dial is blue. That makes it easier to read the bezel, the timing bezel, against the minute hand at night. It's easy to tell what is relevant to a dive. You don't dive for hours, you dive for minutes. Now the watch is 300 meters water resistant. It has a helium escape valve for saturation divers. It has a deployant clasp, and let me show you this clasp because it's a great one. Twin trigger release, single fold deployant, 9.6 millimeters of tool free adjustment. Let's get that back in focus. And you can see with this little push button inside, I can move almost most 10 millimeters incrementally, and then I've got a fold-out dive extension in addition to. Removable links are fixed by screws, and you can see that I have plenty of removable links, including a half link, so I can properly and precisely size this on the wrist. Through the case back, you can see Omega Exclusive Caliber 8800, automatic winding, master chronometer, anti-magnetic, shock resistant, quick set hacking, coaxial escapement. It has a lot to recommend it. And of course, the bezel is 120 click. Let's listen to it. All right, throw it on my wrist. I should mention I own the previous 41 millimeter version of this watch. That was my graduation watch. This one's nice and comfortable. It is bigger, but it's not actually broader because this generation, the 2018 generation of the watch, uses pivoted end links for the bracelet. So the actual lug-to-lug -lug dimension of about 50 millimeters is also the absolute distance across the wrist. Okay, let's say you like that color scheme, white and black, but you want a chronograph. Well, Zenith launched this model last year, and they've got you covered. This is the Zenith Chronomaster Sport, powered by the next generation El Primero Caliber 3600. So the showpiece of this watch, aside from its rather Rolex-derived style, and it is a very good take on that basic aesthetic, but it has a Foudroyant chronograph. So 10 seconds spread over 360 degrees of dial, making it easier to read one-tenth of a second. So for example, you could see here we are looking at nine seconds and one two-tenths of a second. Because the El Primero beats ten times per second, you have that one-tenth of a second resolution. But when it's on a smaller scale, it can be hard to distinguish between fractions. By spreading ten seconds over 360 degrees, it becomes easier to read the fractions within the scale. Now, the bezel is scratch-resistant ceramic. The case is 100 meters water-resistant, 41 millimeters in stainless steel. We have some features not previously featured on El Primero watches, like a 60-hour power reserve and a hacking seconds function. We also get a quick set date. The watch is quite well loomed. It is a true sports watch. It's not called the Chronomaster Sport for nothing. And you can see on the reverse side that the movement, which is the El Primero 2, that is caliber 3600. It uses a lateral clutch and a blue column wheel that you can see for crisp actuation. It has a unlubricated silicon escapement for better performance in between services and longer intervals between services. And you can see it has that beautifully visible lateral clutch and column wheel so you can see the entire mechanism in operation. 
It is a good looking watch on both sides. It has a nice nickel anthracite coating over its reverse side. We'll throw this on the wrist. It wears like a 41 millimeter watch. No less, no more. It's true to size. It's comfortable. I'd say you'd need a wrist of at least 15 centimeters to wear it well. Any smaller, you're probably going to want to put it on a strap rather than a bracelet, but it's a good looking piece. And the bracelet is not too difficult to accommodate. It flares out a little bit. If you want the absolute tightest fit for a small wrist, put it on a strap. Two different ways to enjoy your Royal Oak from Audemars Piguet. The Royal Oak Extra Thin Jumbo and the latest 43 millimeter Royal Oak Offshore. Let's start with the Offshore. This is a model launched last year. The first 43 millimeter Royal Oak Offshore it includes a lot of changes. You can see the Mega Tapisserie dial becomes a little bit more complicated as there are striations on the tops of the hobnails and then there's a sort of uh, crisscross matrix that unifies all the hobnails. So this is a very different look. It has a gradient fade. You can see there's a tachymeter that's integral with the dial. The movement is now a flyback chronograph, so reset and restart start with one push of the double finished ceramic chronograph pusher. The bezel is ceramic, the case is steel. The watch now includes a quick release system so you can rapidly and easily remove the strap. You want to throw on leather, want to put on a bracelet, want to put on a different color rubber strap, you can easily do that and it snaps right back on. And also because it's easy to remove the strap from the case, it should be easy to remove the buckle from the strap. And so we have a little uh, quick release system that pivots and unlocks the pin buckle. So that's how that works. The watch is well loomed. We'll do a loom shot right here. But you can see it's only the hands that are well loomed. So you got to keep your bearings. Now one of the interesting things about this watch is that it features a shaped sapphire crystal, a bit like what you find on the Code 1159. And you can see that the bezel actually slopes from side to side. It thins out at the ends and then it's thick in the middle. So this is something we haven't seen previously. F turn it over, you'll see that design mimicked on the reverse side. There's an echo of the bezel as the case back is actually thicker in the middle and then it tapers toward the ends. You can see that the ceramic is finished with both satination and polish, which is technically and artisanally impressive as it's very difficult to finish ceramic. We have a bezel and ceramic to soak up all the hits that would normally take the finish off your steel case. And of course, the bolts inside the bezel are both bolts and made of steel. On the reverse side, we have a chronograph caliber, it's the 4401, automatic winding, you can see the column wheel is visible, flyback chronograph, hacking seconds, quick set date, 4 hertz beat rate, vertical clutch and column wheel, 70 hour power reserve, all that, and you can see it is a good looking movement with a full balance bridge and a free sprung balance for shock tolerance. So that is, that is the new in-house integrated Audemars Piguet chronograph caliber for the offshore, which is why now we have the date flush with the dial as you're no longer looking through a tube down past a module into a base caliber. It's not as thick as you might think. It's a comfortable watch on my wrist. And again, I do think that 15 centimeter circumference or larger wrist is gonna wear this really well. Now let's say you do have a smaller wrist or you have more traditional tastes. That's why we have the Royal Oak Jumbo, the direct descendant of the original 1972 5402 by Gerald Genta. This is the 15202 ST in its original 2000 to 2011 version. So you can tell it's the original because among other things, the AP logo is at 12 instead of six. We have little Arabic numerals outboard of the indices. We have a date disc that is not the same color as the dial. And then of course we have a buckle that is a little bit different in architecture. It's a single fold with the AP logo and a single retractable trigger. You also note one of the changes that was actually a downgrade from 2011 to the 2012 model. Uh, this is the older form. Uh, let me see if I can get this in focus here. But this is the older form of the case back rotor, which was a little bit more elaborate in how it was first skeletonized and then finished. We have those sharp outward points, a couple of sharp inward angles, and you can see it's both skeletonized and then beveled internally with the A and the P logo. We have the JLC-based caliber 2121, which is now discontinued in the jumbo. It's been replaced by a uh, more modern but less charismatic in-house caliber. You can see it has a, a solid beryllium ring that runs all the way around the movement and then one half has the mass. And there are four ruby rollers that are built into the base plate and the beryllium ring moves on those. So those little ruby bearings allow the rotor to be sunken close to the bridges and the plates without coming in contact with them. Now it's a 40 hour power reserved, has a free sprung gyromax style architecture. 
and you can see that it was adjusted in five positions, which is chronometer standard. You can also see little things like the quality of the bevels and the breadth of the Cote de Genève, that the finishing on these 2121s is to a higher level than what you'll find on more modern mass-produced AP watch calibers. You can also see that not only are the hands, the logo, and the indices made out of white gold, there's your loom shot, but the bolts inside the bezel are also made of white gold. That's why they're a little bit warmer and darker in color than the silver steel. Throw it on the wrist, it's very comfortable. The 39 is super flat, flush to the wrist. It is called the extra thin and it lives up to its name. It's about 11.1 to 11.3 millimeters thick. Easy to wear, I can recommend this for a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. Very comfortable, more dress watch than a sports watch these days, though it remains resolutely sporty in its appearance. You don't need to wear a tuxedo to dress this watch. Let's take a look at a couple of affordable watches that have a lot to offer. Uh, this right here is the latest version of the IWC's Portugieser chronograph. This is the 3716-15. So it is the 41 millimeter stainless steel Portugieser. We first started seeing this version powered by caliber 69355 in 2018 during the 150th anniversary jubilee of IWC. Well, now we get a general production display case back with an automatic winding column wheel chronograph that is made in-house. There's a 46-hour power reserve. Uh, this is a replacement for the previous modified Valjoux 7750 that did business as caliber 79320. This is now IWC's own movement, which is why you get a display case back. And you can see the column wheel is visible. It's five position adjusted. The watch has a full deployant clasp. And with a gorgeous green metallic sunburst style, it has a lot of color. And it's an upbeat timepiece, fun to wear and thinner than you might think at 13.2 millimeters thick. Now on the wrist, it cuts a lower profile and it's shorter across the wrist than a conventional 42 to 44 millimeter Portuguese. So this is really the one to wear if you don't want a huge watch. Traditionally, the Portuguese has been big, bigger, and biggest. Uh, this is actually the smallest standard size men's Portuguese are available. And I should also mention that the Portuguese chronograph first introduced in the late 90s is the most popular Portuguese model of all time. So if you buy this, you will be in good company. Company. Now, we'll stick with the green dials, but a different look. This time from Japan, we have the SBGJ 251. It is a green dial, 39.5 millimeter. Grand Seiko Automatic GMT. Now it's the high beat GMT, 36,000 vibrations per hour, 55 hour power reserve. We have the ability to set that local hour hand independently while the watch keeps on keeping time. And of course, then we could hack the second, stop the movement, and set everything in sync. We have 12-hour and 24-hour formats. We have a manufacturer movement. You can see it through the reverse side. It's adjusted in six positions, one more than a standard chronometer. They make everything. There's shock protection, their stones for pivots, even their own lubricants. This collection, the Elegance Collection, is derived from the first and early 60s Grand Seiko watches, which had these separate lugs, a rounded case profile, plexiglass crystals. This is a cambered sapphire that's designed to look like a vintage plexiglass. So this watch is designed to look like a modern interpretation of the original 1960 Grand Seiko watch. The case is entirely hand-finished, held against a spinning tin plate. This is what they call Zaratsu finish at Grand Seiko. It's done on a, a Zalitz machine of European origin, but the foremost practice practitioners of this art are now the folks who work at Seiko and Grand Seiko. It wears well. It's suitable for a small wrist. It's very comfortable and it's fairly flat. This is a handmade watch inside and out. One of the standout features of the finishing is the case. The other, the quality of the dial furniture, as you can see, the indices, the frame for the date, the logo, and the hands have razor sharp fastening and then a contrast of satin and polish on micro-sized surfaces. This is impressive stuff that's done manually using a diamond-tipped milling tool, so a lot to love with this watch. Well, let's say you want more water resistance, you want something that's a little bit more tactical. Well, just this past year, 2021, Tudor released the Palagos FXD, which is both a tribute to the Tudor Marine Nationale, French Navy combat watches of the 50s through the 1980s, but this is also itself a modern military issue watch that's actually used by members of the French naval unit Commando Hubert, and it was developed in conjunction with them to suit their needs. So this is not 
some sort of a poser trading on 1950s or 60s imagery. This is actually used by modern military personnel in the line of duty. Now the watch does include some changes from a standard Pelagos. For one thing, we have a steel case back that includes special Marine Nationale markings. You can see Marine Nationale 22, that is the year the watch was made. The original ones from last year said 21. You could see the logo of the anchor and the wheel. And you can see that these are no mean lugs. This, this watch includes fixed lugs that are integral with the case. And this was one of the demands. Now, welded in lugs are a long-standing tradition in military issue watches. Uh, this is a more elegant factory proposed solution to just welding spring bars in place, but it's very consistent with long-term use of solid retaining bars on military issue watches for greater security. Now, here we have a strap that may actually look textile, but it is in fact rubber. There's also a textile strap that comes with the watch. And as you can see right here, we have a matching pin buckle. The watch is 42 millimeters in diameter and it features some changes from the standard Pelagos. For one, it doesn't have the helium escape valve. For another, it's 200 meters instead of 500, but it loses the date. That's another big change. Also, instead of having a unidirectional rotating dive bezel that counts up, here we have a bidirectional rotating bezel that counts down. This was a specific request of the Commando Uber personnel, and you could see that the watch is elaborately luminescent. Not only is this a bi-directional countdown bezel, uh, but it is fully calibrated. Not just the first 15 minutes is on a standard Pelagos, but all the way from the first minute to the last, index to index. Now, the watch is also about 1.5 millimeters thinner than a standard Pelagos, which makes it easier to wear. The timepiece is very comfortable, 42 millimeters in titanium. You can see it's all matte finished. There's no polishing. That was also part of the unit's uh, specifications. An easy watch to wear. It uses a 5600 series Tudor in-house movement that's a chronometer, anti-magnetic with a silicon hairspring, automatic winding, stop seconds, and a 70-hour power reserve. So you get all of that with this Tudor Pelagos FXD. Now, let's say you have a cost-no-object approach to your sports watches. Well, this 2009 limited edition is going to be right up your alley. You could see they only made 150 of this Jeger Le Coult Master Compressor Extreme Tourbillon, and it is an extreme tourbillon. Let's talk about its basic capabilities. 100 meter water resistance. You have a unique compressor crown system as invented by JLC. You just... Twist it half a turn and it unlocks. Now I can set the watch. You twist it half a turn and now it's locked. And this is easy to do even if your hands are wet, sweaty, or gloved. I'm going to show you some of the functions of the watch. Um, let me show you some of the cooler features on the case back first. Because this watch features a 22 millimeter lug spacing and one of the only quick release lug systems you'll find that will accept a generic properly sized 22 millimeter strap. You don't need a proprietary strap the way you do with Cartier and IWC and Hublot. Any properly sized strap will fit. And you can see this factory piece is nicely done with a combination of textile and calfskin. And I'm going to show you how you operate this watch. It is a tourbillon and it uses the same basic movement that in 2009 won the Concours de Chronometrie against purpose-built chronometry watches, and this movement, as adjusted by JLC for the competition, had annual deviation, that is inaccuracy, over a full year of about plus 47 seconds. That is the potential of this free-sprung, six-position adjusted, overcoil tourbillon. Now, we have a couple of cool features in here. You can see there's a, a GMT system, so you have a 24-hour second time zone, and the watch try to show you this as best I can, but it includes a radial date indicator, and the radial date indicator features a special timing system so that in the course of the jump through the night of the 15th to the 16th, 
the date indicator will jump all the way over the tourbillon so as not to obscure your view. Now this is also an automatic winding watch and it has a 48 hour power reserve. It has a shock resistant case. The inside of the case is made of titanium grade 5. The outside of the case is made of rose gold. Now there are shock absorbers between them with the result that this watch can withstand the kind of impacts that would kill a normal timepiece like tennis, golf, and firearms. It's also well loomed. As you can see, there's plenty of luminescence on this dial, and the watch is beautifully finished, though it doesn't include a display case back for water resistance ratings. You can see that it does feature a beautifully finished tourbillon carriage with satination, mirror beveling, blued and black polished screws, and the tourbillon cage itself is actually made of titanium to reduce its mass. The dial is a lovely nickel anthracite silver sunburst, and then we'll throw this watch on the wrist. It is a big piece. I'm not going to lie to you. It's too big for me. It's 46.4 millimeters, so you're going to need a beefy wrist to wear it. Uh, but you can get a, a sense of this. This is, this is the kind of watch that a football player would wear. If you've got the budget and you've got the wrist, this is about as intense as a sports watch gets from one of the great high horology brands in the business. Mitch, are you listening to me? This one's made for you. Okay, now we have something that's just a pure pleasure and a lot of fun. HYT is back in business as of 2022, and they are once again servicing all of their watches, offering parts support, and in my opinion, some of the older HYT H0 case watches represent great value, and that's what we have right here. Uh, the HYT H0, a design launched in 2017, the previous watches were wonderful, but just too big to wear. By eliminating the lugs, you have a large case that's 48.8 millimeters in diameter, but it's also 48.8 millimeters lug to lug, which means it's easy to wear. You can see that this watch case is nowhere near, let me see if I can get this back in focus, but it's nowhere near the edge of my wrist, not even even close. Now we have a display system that is a regulator and a retrograde because we have separate seconds, we have separate minutes, and we have separate hours. We also have a power reserve indicator. Let me take you through some of the features here. Now the watch includes a mechanical movement designed by Chronode. Chronode is a high horology house best known for creating one installment of the Harry Winston Opus series created by Jean-Francois Mojon, former complications engineer at IWC. That is the company that built this, the caliber H101. You can see it's a Swiss lever escapement, one mainspring barrel, 65-hour manual wind power reserve. It's conventional mechanical movement. Now it uses a cam system, which you can sort of see through the skeletonized bridges, to pump these two bellows. One contains a green fluid, the other contains a clear fluid, and they are immiscible. So so that they can never mix and the meniscus between them indicates the current hour. Now you can see that the watch actually responds quite quickly as you set it. And for example, right now you are looking at 11 o'clock. So you can see the little meniscus is next to 11 and the minute is at 60, so that is 11 o'clock. Now we also have power reserve indicator. As you wind it manually, it turns from black to green. So just keep in mind, this watch is also a power reserve in addition to a regulator and a retrograde. But you're probably wondering, how is it a retrograde? And that's a great question because this is an unexpectedly spry fluidic display system. When it gets to the end of its travel, you can see three, four, five, six, six continues on the other side, but there's no way for the fluid to jump across that gap. So when you reach six on the nose, the fluid retreats all the way back around the dial. Now, let me show you the loom shot because surprisingly, the watch does have loom. And you can see it right here. It's very easy to wear, and it's remarkably scratch resistant because you can see almost the entirety of the case is this catering cap. It's almost like what you would see over a tray of club sandwiches. It's an enormous vaulted sapphire that's one of the most dramatic I've seen outside of the likes of a Corum bubble. And the case itself in metal it is so low in profile and far from the impact surfaces that this watch effectively wears like an unscratchable sapphire case, 1800 Vickers. And if you please, you can read the time in 24 hour format laterally on the case. It gives you that option too. I really enjoy these. They also use a clever deploying clasp system. There's a push button in here with a micro adjustment so you can easily make some fine-tuned sizing changes on the fly. The watch is really comfortable, looks great, and it's unlike anything else out there. 
Now we're going from high horology to sky high horology. De Batoon of La Berson is one of the foremost independents of our era, and full disclosure, Watchbox is a stakeholder. But if you trace the arc of my video production over the years, you can see that I've been on board for most of a decade. This has long been my favorite brand, and it is the leading candidate to replace my now gone Zin. So what you have here is a historically important piece for De Batoon. It was their first use of their now signature variable geometry spring-loaded floating lugs, and their first use of sapphire hands, so you can see the dial underneath. This is the DB26 Perpetual Calendar. It came out in 2008. These are now quite collectible. They're very thin. This one is white gold, and you can see the dial includes their famous spherical moon phase, one half blued steel, one half white palladium, adjustment interval of once every 1,112 years, a perpetual calendar with a pointer style date, and then, of course, you have other features that tell you what month it is and what day it is, and there's even a leap year phase indicator inside the little fired blue titanium ring around the sphere. And you can see that the sapphire hands are easy to read. We have blue titanium cabochon for the hours. And of course, this watch is an inverse bullhead winder. The crown is actually down at six o'clock. You could set it and you never have to worry about obscuring your access to the perpetual calendar because it is visible in perpetuity, pun intended. Now they have a proprietary patented method for bluing titanium and you can see that here on the little background of the moon phase as well as the individual hour cabochon. Turn it all over and we have a spectacular movement. You could see this caliber, a debitoon proprietary movement, twin mainspring barrels, manual wind, six-day power reserve. That goes down to five with the perpetual calendar. It has triple pair shoot shock protection. You can see one, two, three shock protection springs for the balance, which is actually sort of a double yoke. It's non-annular. It's not a wheel. The balance is like two crossed yokes made of blued titanium with platinum masses. And you can see that the finishing is very traditional. You may ask why this odd shock protection system and a proprietary balance chronometry. That's why. Both balance Balance and shock protection system are patented. The twin self-adjusting mainspring barrels also patented. You cannot accidentally overwind them. And you can see the Cote de Batoon. The stripes are beautiful, lustrous, and luminous. We have black polish on the balance bridge as well as the mirrored anglage on the edge of the deltoid-style barrel bridge. So you can see that it is mirrored and rounded traditionally, and so are the screw heads black polished and the base plate media blasted. It is very special, and the idea here is that the finish is traditional high horology, even though the watch itself is horological avant-garde. And of course, being a perpetual calendar, it can deal with leap years, irregular length months, and you don't need to reset it until the year 2100. You can see it is flatter than you might have thought, and it wears well on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. A long discontinued and highly sought movement. Now, this was my Debatoon dream watch until I discovered the DBD, but this is probably the more wearable watch because everyone has told me that the DBD is the ugliest watch they've ever seen in their lives. Well, almost everyone likes the DB28 Digital, which I hold here, and there is a lot to love. Debatoon makes its own dials, cases, and movements. So, like FP Journe, or I should say Montre Journe, the company, there is full vertical integration. They even make things like their own balances and they shape their own hairsprings. So, this dial was made in house. It's cut on their own rose lathe. They do their guilloche in-house, and they even do their own gem setting in-house. Everything they can do in-house, they do in-house. The money is reinvested into the company. It doesn't buy sports cars for CEO Pierre Jacques and watchmaker Denis Flageolet. Now, the dial is unconventional for a DB28 because it's solid. What we have here is a bullhead winder with a screw-down crown for security, a grade 5 titanium case that's only about 13 millimeters thick. It's 45 millimeters in diameter. Here we have the floating lugs once again, so it'll adapt to your wrist. And we have a crown that can be used to operate the jump hour system. Now we also have a quick set for rapidly setting the moon phase at center. And the moon phase I'll show you how this works. It has a little quick set, so you can see it turns from blued steel to white palladium as you operate the quick set system. The little surround flanking each edge of the moon, uh, that is actually blued titanium. Here we have blued titanium. 
the little arc over the minutes. The little white gold cabochon that represent the stars in the cosmos, those are actually little white gold pins that are inserted into drilled slots by hand. So there's a lot of refinement here. Now on the reverse side of the watch, I'll give you a little peek underneath the case back sticker. We have an incredibly high level of detail. And yet again, we have another Debatoon proprietary balance. This is their 2010 patent balance, a solid disc of silicon with a white gold rim. You can also see other refinements. The triple pair shoot bridge now is completely rounded and black polished, no longer flat and black polished. It's now rounded, which is much harder to finish, and it's been blued. So too is the uh, structure that braces the triple parachute shock protection over the barrel bridge. We'll put that right back in place right there. And you can see that the Cote de Batoon are still present and correct. We have that same level of glossy mirrored anglage, but we have a more sophisticated finish as both the base plate or I should say the base plate cap and the deltoid bridge feature that Cote de Batoon striping. And we have satination on the barrel wheels themselves, the, the ratchet wheels, as well as the, the barrel caps. So this is a finely finished movement, and everything about this watch exhausts superlatives. In spite of being a jump hour, which is a traditionally power intensive complication, it still has a manual wind five day power reserve. Guys, this thing is the absolute beast. Everything about it. The grade five titanium makes it light. The lugs make it wear well. The complication is spectacular. The finish is best in the world. And Debatoon only makes 200 to 220 watches a year, having built fewer than 3,000 watches in its entire history since being founded in 2002. Reach out to me, T. Masso, Tim Masso, is T. Masso at thewatchbox.com. Time out, Tim out, and thanks for logging on.